just your tracks today. Hi, Milwaukee. I'm Robin Reese. I'm the host of the podcast Between the Sheets. Um, before I get started, I just hope that everybody um, enjoys my podcast. Very unfiltered. Very, very unfiltered. Nothing is getting left unsaid. Maybe a few cuss words, but nothing is off the tables. Everything is going to be said on Between the Sheets with Robin Reese. Um, before I introduce my special guest, um, I wanted to say that I'm very, very excited about this episode one. Um, I always wanted to be a journalist, so I said 2022 what better way to get out there than to start a podcast? So I'm here and that's that's my goal. My goal is to reach the people, speak to the people, tell the truth to the people and laugh with the people. Spread love, spread peace and bring change where I can bring change. So to get started, my first guest is my friend Tasha here. Um, I'm gonna let her introduce herself. Tasha is an entrepreneur just like myself. I have a background in entrepreneurship, so I'm going to start with her. I'm going to let her tell you all a little bit about herself and her business, and we're going to get started with episode one, All Tasha All the Time. Wow. All Tasha All the Time. I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Tasha Williams. Um, I am the owner and CEO of Williams Heart Savers. We are here saving one heart at a time. If you need your CPR recertified or you're trying to get it um, just to have it, you can reach me on Facebook at uh, Tasha Williams or my business page, uh, Williams Heart Savers LLC. Other than that, um, let's get it. Okay, so first I named this episode All Tasha All the Time because... The minute I met her, <laughs> she has made me laugh every moment up until this very moment. Even right now, I'm anticipating a laugh. <laughs> so, so when when we link, it, it's very it's very positive. Yeah. It's it's heartfelt. It's what you should look for in a friendship. It's uplifting and it's laughter being spread. It's positivity. We're always laughing, even if it's something bad going on. Tasha is there for the laugh. She go to Tasha, you get the laugh. So she can definitely turn something wrong right you know i've been told a lot of times that i should be a comedian but i'm kind of scared to do the stand-up like i can make you laugh but i won't get on the stage because i'd be scared somebody <laughs> might boo me and then i'd be ready to fight so that's not but i definitely crack a few jokes though and hits at the same time so. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <He's> <laughs> hopefully we can edit out the hands part <laughs> so our subject today is hot girl summer it's our subject because we've been talking about hot girl summer all winter and ladies it is our time to catch pops and shoot dice all day have your husbands boyfriends significant others girlfriends blowing up your phone asking you what time you coming home and we're gonna tell them once the phone slow down so why do women deserve a hot girl summer why wouldn't i deserve a hot girl summer i work Every day, all day, I take care of the kids, which is really not a job because being a mother is something that you choose to do. So you have no choice but to do it. But your significant other do it. When well, you calling this phone, what you're doing, you want to spend quality time. It's it's just reversing the roles. Let them see how we feel. Leave the kids at home with them too. <laughs> you know, and just be out here and enjoying enjoying friendships and good laughters and lots and lots of wine so when they are at home with the kids should they 
make their food they from scratch or make something out the refrigerator. Oh, I don't, you don't care, care what, what, I don't they, care what do. they do. They can Jimmy John this for all I care. I don't care what they do. As long as they get fed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what they do. <laughs> I definitely think that women deserve a hot girl summer because we 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 give so much. Men only see the part where, oh, she she's just a mom. She's just this. She's just that. Yeah, by the time you get done saying she's just, 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 just that list is long because you gotta when you're raising kids you're not only feeding them but you're their psychologists you're the teachers you know you're the, you're the, the first friends you know so sometimes it's like yeah hot girl summer i'm signing up like i'm going outside and i'm enjoying all those things you enjoy while i'm taking care of what i'm Man. supposed to take care of <laughs> and i mean most of us like both of us like we work in i work a full-time job I'm trying to get my business off the ground. Plus, I'm a full time student. So, I'm about to full time outside. Outside hours this summer, ladies, is from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. But if you got a man that's going to track you down, please stay far, far, far away from us because we're not trying to get our head <laughs> between the washer and dryer. Take off that location, too. <laughs> Facts. And make sure you don't have what them little Apple things that they got now. Make sure you don't have one of those on because we're not trying to find, we're not trying to get found. We outside. <laughs> outside. All summer. 10 p.m. Yeah. And in reality, my old butt gonna be in the bed by 9 o'clock. But it's Same. Facts. Fine. Facts. It's, perfectly, it's perfectly fine. It's just the reality of being able to say we're gonna be outside. Like, I laugh with joking giggles, but Outside is dangerous right about now. So, yeah. But you can always grab a group of girls and be outside in the house, though. Low key. <laughs> it's very and true. just turn off your phone. Very and whoever true. first phone ring, you got to go. Because <laughs> sooner or later, somebody's popping up looking for you. And you got to go. Kick them out the party. Very true. So, I asked you about the high girl summer because I always feel like women go unappreciated today is women's appreciation day that is true and you know sometimes we want to just know that we appreciate it for all that we do you know not to say that men don't appreciate us not to say that men don't hold the load equally but i think what's missing is that we it's it's natural for us so would it be natural for us people or men should i say just automatically feel like because we do it so easy that it's not a problem or it's not a burden or it don't bear down on us but it really do i i can't agree with that only because i feel like as males even though i'm not a male but most males as we know when a male is grown up, they are head of household sooner or later, more sooner than later. So them expressing emotions is sometimes looked, is uh, frowned upon. So it's like, if I see my mama do it flawlessly, the woman I'm supposed to be with should do it flawlessly. Like my husband right now called me superwoman and I don't know why. Like I got kryptonite. I go in the bathroom, I cry in the shower, but you never get a, a, a lifesaver. The person, the stronger person never gets a lifesaver because everybody thinks they're always strong. And sometimes the strong person, I need a lifesaver. Like, throw me a boat. That's true. Bring me a boat. But, Send me a little yachty. And I agree with what you said, but do if a man was to do what you do seven days out of seven, how many days would you give him? Honestly, you know what? I can't. I can't really lie. I went traveling um, about the middle, the middle of 2018, and at the time, uh, my youngest was like two, getting ready to turn two. Her daddy held her down for about three months by herself. So I, I mean, I get credit. Like we got a lot of dads out there that's definitely stepping up to the plate. So shout out to all the single fathers, not even just single fathers, just the ones that does it on the daily. But you deadbeats gets. <laughs> but he definitely held it down. I thought he, I thought he was gonna crumble, crash and crumble. But I mean, he can't do a ponytail. But she was clean. <laughs> she was fed. You ain't died, did you? <laughs> she, she ain't died. And she like she's literally a daddy's girl. And when I, I mean, when I say literally daddy girl, like we just did. She go over there and I call her like, "You ready to come home?" And she be like, "Nope." She'll stay with her dad. She'll stay with. She'll stay with him for like two weeks at a time. And I. I go about my business. 
So with that being said, are you just speaking on fatherhood? Or are you just speaking on the whole the whole board? Because it's you know men have to be able to do what we do across the board. Go to work, work a full time job. Go to school full time. Raise them kids full time. Everybody do it differently though. Like our moms did it differently from how our grandma did it. So it's like I mean everybody got their own way of raising a child. So I feel like as long as you're doing it right, I don't care how it gets done, you know. And then he do have a nice little support system. But I do feel like if he didn't have a tight knit support system. He probably would have crashed and burned. And when it's most of us, it's like with female, with women with children, it's no hose bars. Like we, if you ain't got no support system, you still gotta get out here and do it. Like I didn't really have a support system. I got seven. So me and my kids is us against the world. And that's how it always been. So I mean, then I kind of feel like I messed it up at times because the older my older daughter played. You know what I mean? watching the older kids watch the younger kids but at the end of the day it was we got to survive so we do things to survive but then sometimes you lose your childhood growing up when it's just y'all when it's just, we don't have a close-knit family so yeah but i mean it all plays out siblings are usually very close-knit when it's something like that happens in most cases so i'm all for it however you do it Loans don't nobody get hurt. So it is what it is. Yeah. But I definitely I know a couple fathers. Like my best friend done had his son since I can't. I mean, I whew, I think we met in what 2012 and he had his son. So and I think he was then was maybe about one, one, two. So he's been doing the third thistle. So I give it, we do got men out there, so I'm not yeah. downplaying. I'm not downplaying all of them because we definitely have a lot, a lot of men that would definitely um, crush a female in raising kids because, you know, mothers could be deadbeats too. Yeah. I actually know quite a few men that do pretty good with their kids. Like every single day, I even know some that don't see their kids or wish they could see their kids so that they could do the day to day. And I kind of, I kind of hate for those ones only because some baby mamas are very, very, very bitter. Like if you don't mess with me, you can't mess with your kid. Or if you got another girlfriend, you can't see your kids. I, I can't, I think I did it. I did it. I did play the, the bitter baby mama role for a minute. And that was only because we had beef because of the way everything played off. But I feel like if he would have did it a different way, um, we probably would have been fine. But now, hell, I don't give a I don't give a care who you mess with. I'm dropping kids off. She not do ponytails. She not a braid hair. Would need me buy the ball balls and rubber bands? I mean, do do you, big baby? I mean, I ain't on it. But I feel any woman that keeps a man that is a trying man from their kids is definitely better. And butt hurt and need to get over herself. So, you know what? <clears throat> I can honestly say on air that the only time my kids really didn't see their fathers is because one, he was playing back and forth between me and whoever else he was with. Got nothing to do with you and, and the kids. two, he was two being different. disrespectful. As long as them two things don't happen, then we cool. Because if it's over, let it be over. You do you, I do me. Don't we here for the kids? That's one. And two, if we talking about our kids, I shouldn't be caught on my name. I shouldn't be disrespected. We could communicate without you being disrespectful. But most most of the times the disrespect is there. But I don't feel like the disrespect should still keep that man from his child. You feel what I'm saying? Like what adults go through. I feel like kids, like I would never, ever, ever, I'd never have talked bad about any one of my kids' fathers in front of the kids. Now, I ain't going to say I didn't talk about them like a dog because I probably don't talk about them like Dippy Dog, Snoop Dog, and everybody or any other dog. Mm -hmm. But I never, ever talked bad about them to the kids. So I feel like a kid will figure out on their own how their father is and have their own perception of their dad. So I would never take away 
you know what I mean? I would never take away they, the insight or the image that they have of their father. They get up, they get up at age, and you know what I mean. It is, it's, it's from there. But I'm not gonna be the captain of the ship and floating that ship. And oh well, your daddy did this, 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 and this, and your daddy did this, 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 and this. But at the same time, we gotta understand, kids ain't these new kids. They ain't stupid by far. But do you think that it's a toxic environment when your father is, um, only seeing you because? He wanna he is only seeing his child because he wants to see you. That's very toxic. Or do you think that it's toxic for your the your the father of your child to cuss you out and disrespect you in front of your kid? That's toxic. I think that sometimes you do have to put those separation boundaries in place or get court involved get third until party. y'all could yeah, it's some men make it hard for the third party to be the third party. Let me tell you something. I learned a valuable lesson. I pull up and pull off. Pull up, pull off, put them out. I mean, my kids couldn't even get out the car fast enough before I was already <laughs> speeding off. So just so I won't have them problems or I go to the grandparents, but then most grandparents going to stand behind their kids too. So where they son actually, which is really yeah, crazy. I, 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 yeah, I, I struggle with like, because of who they, you know, certain people were, I wasn't able to deal with you know, whatever people that they had that could have been a third party and likewise on my end, because my own family even at one point was like, absolutely not, because it's just too, you know what I'm saying? Then in that part, I But do. I have now that I, you know, because I, no matter what, I, looking back, you know, I, I've always felt like, you know what, I feel like my kids is missing a big part of their lives by only being with me and not being with them because they still fault, they still doing like both my kids to the t they do stuff that's identical to their dad so it's like i do got to try to you know do what i can and extend the olive branch to try to be the bigger person but yeah i i had some periods where i really struggled was like you know cut off see you later <laughs> like because this is not working this is too toxic this is bad energy our kid is not doing it to begin hurt. If you know your kids see you in the bed with dad and and, and then thinking we about to be a family, we'll be not a family, or your kid you see you getting cussed out. I can't, you know, you know what? I I've been there. I done definitely turned the baby daddy or two into <laughs> a side piece, but then it was like you treat him like any other. You gotta be gone before the kids get up. <laughs> you can't come over until the kids sleep. And you got to be gone when they leave, only because you don't want to give you don't want to give the kids the false hope of mama and daddy back together. So, but if that's or it can meet me at the Holiday Inn, something. But I will always leave that door open. Like for a while, uh, one of my I got one son, so he, him and his dad had a close knit relationship. But mind you, with that same person, I got two daughters with. And it was more so, well, you take care of the girls and I handle the boy. Okay, cool. But, you know, the girls still want to see their daddy. A girl's first love Boy's is her father. Is their father. Yeah, which is love. true because Tato got her daddy wrapped around her, her little fingers. Like, he can't bust a move. And I was on the phone playing with him earlier. Like, oh, Tato, did your daddy tell you he got another girl pregnant? She's like, who? Oh, where? Like. Calm down, Mississippi Jones. But I forever leave that door open for him. Um, but once I'm gone, I'm gone. Once I check out, once your kids get to a certain point, there's no need for you to have a conversation with your kid's father. Like at that point, they got a phone, call them. And if you don't call them, I'm not going to be like, oh, did you call your dad? Like, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I do it with my kids when I don't hear from them. Every now and again, like, dang, y'all don't even call me, you know. Check mm-hmm. the I could be dead somewhere in the ditch. They're like, well, you don't call us, you the mama. Okay, I don't understand. I'm still confused. You're supposed to call me. But I leave the door open. I just leave it leave it open. And if rather if they want to open it or close it, that's on them. But most of, most of my kids are, with the exception of one, and even now, she can use the phone. She'll pick up. I mean, she can't dial the numbers, but she'll definitely find them on Facebook and she'll video chat them or whatever. So once they get old enough to learn how to 
And these kids learning how to use devices at two. Mm-hmm. Apple, I mean, iPads and all this old other gidgema gadgets. So any way that a child could communicate with their father is fine. Once we get to that point, after a while, nigga, don't call me. Don't call me at all. I call uh, with the youngest one. I call her dad. Oh, well, you know, can she come over? Um, maybe he was doing something or whatever. But if it's mama at home, I'm dropping her off. <laughs> you ain't even got to be there. Your mama there. If somebody there that's gonna open that door for her. <laughs> she getting up out of here. I wish. I'll be knock knock. Here we go. See you later. Tato will tell. She'll tell the take care driver. Take her to her grandma house. Quick. (laughs) And then I'll be looking for her. Like, oh, she'll she'll call me like, oh, yeah, I'm over at grandma boo house. All right. I'm going to see you in a week. (laughs) That's that's about it. That's about all. But I definitely feel like every man. But then you got to think about it, too. You got some women that trap men. And they already told them from jump that they didn't like they didn't want the kid with them and the mother took it upon herself to keep the kid mm-hmm. you feel me? like if a man have a, a conversation with you and tell you to have an abortion obviously that man don't want no kids so if you decide to keep it that's on you you can't fault him and that's just my stance on it so so at what point so okay so if a man have kids with a lot of women and he mm-hmm. say that every single time at at what point is it his fault? Because why would you have kids with a lot of different women, but you don't want none of the kids? You got to know that if you do certain actions, it's going to result to you having the kids. But certain men know who they want to have kids with, though. Like but if, you if just a man decide, always says that he doesn't want to have a kid. Well, yeah, he need to get himself fixed. Then. But he always has kids. What the- This is my thing. If a man come to me and tell me, if, like that should be a topic. Every everybody want to jump into okay, let's just have sex. Nobody want to have the open topic of okay, do you want kids? Like my husband want another kid. I don't want none. I got seven. I don't want another kid. Like I'm I'm knocking on 40s door. I want to be able to travel. I don't want to have to right carry no damn diaper bag. Mm-hmm. So if I do end up pregnant, he gonna be a single dad because I'm giving him the baby. It's on you, dog. Don't call me. And I'm one of the worst. <laughs> I don't want no parts of it. But if a man is having, if y'all, if that conversation is open and he is expressing to you, because most women express the men to like most men, some men want kids, some women don't want kids. And it's just a conversation that we have to have. And if in that conversation, a man is telling me, oh, I'm not ready for a kid. I don't want to be a dad right about now. And I take it upon myself to not cover myself. You know what I mean? Like we got birth control out here. Make the man if you don't want to wear a condom, make sure your birth control is on point, or make him wear a condom. Like is it at the end of the day, everything falls on a female. So I can't fault a man that tells me he don't want a kid, and I end up having a kid. I can't force that kid on him because he wanted from the get go. What about a man who says that he doesn't want the kid until after she already pregnant? Sometimes men have a change of heart, but sometimes a baby can change change of perspective on some points um i don't know what it is as far as like like a man go through but i know when i have my had my first daughter it was that like i it was an eye opener for me like it was now i got somebody else i have to take care of so it was this person depending on me so i had to change everything that i was doing so it was no more hot girl teenage years so but I think some men get some men get that too. You got some men that you got some men that a baby shower at gender reveals is more happier than a mother. So it's not. Oh, I don't think all men don't want kids or whatever. But I really feel like it's a conversation to have if you're having sex with this person. And if the person is just a sneaky link or a one night stand, you're still supposed to protect yourself. Yeah. Um. While we're talking about sneaky links, it's a lot of people who have baby showers. With no baby daddy, how did you get pregnant? Cause I want to know. It was that two AM call, and he said he was outside, and I. But how is out. everybody? It's everybody now. It's, it's not everybody. It's, it's a good. It's a good it's, majority. It's a good majority of them, and again, some of them fall in. I was, you know, popping it for pimping, not pimp gone. Pimp ain't one of it. Pimp, it pimp wasn't 
supposed to be there in the first place. <laughs> I'm just saying it's become a more popular thing now where women aren't, you know. But then you got some women just just want to use them to have a baby. So yeah. you got to. It's I mean it's it's always two sides to a coin. Yeah, I just. I just feel like now after me having my kids, like you definitely want to check the mental health and the background on these men before C-cap you have them kids. ASAP. No, not CCAP, <laughs> mental health. They need to go under a mental evaluation <laughs> and they need to go. You need to do their family tree assessment prior to even. If the daddy crazy, nine times out of ten, the son is crazy also. But not Apple even that. Not even that. You will, because I'm telling you, they hide those things so well. I never knew that I was up against half the stuff I was up against until I was up against them. But have you ever noticed, though? <laughs> I'm like, most, whoa, this is a lot, <laughs> literally. Most men that tend to hide those are the ones that have been hurt the most. Right. That's like why it's, it it's needs a to lot be of, some mental It's it a lot to of be trauma. Some, yeah. Behind like true. He done got his heart broken a couple few times cuz he done, and I don't get that though. True. Like why is it that a man true, but I don't, his first heartbreak he turned into a 304? Like why is it that? Right, but why is it that a man if well cuz women too, if why do hurt people have to hurt people? It should it, should, it need to be some healing going on, especially if you know that you're going to commit these acts that's going to lead you into fatherhood and motherhood. Because guess what? If you don't heal that trauma in your life, you're going only going to um make it contagious and spread it to your children. I had to learn that the hard way. I, I had some issues with my own daughter, and I was just like, Man, some of the stuff she's saying to me is like me looking at myself in the mirror and not right. really understanding that. I'm subconsciously traumatizing her by the by the stuff that I experience or by the stuff that I'm going through or whatever happening in my life is playing off onto her and not really looking at what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. So I have been like refocusing on moving better, but a lot of people don't see don't don't even do that. A lot of people don't even they just dig the ditch and dig deeper and deeper and deeper. Sometimes I do believe hurt people do hurt people. That is that is a fact but sometimes you i mean you find that one person that helps you heal like you you can find somebody to help you heal but if you don't want to heal yourself you're never gonna heal you know what i'm saying like when i was younger i did the whole i wasn't able to give my virginity up it was taken so in that terms it was like oh well the only thing that i really have to offer anything won't from me it, that's what it was. So I was out here popping it for pimp. Even and it, like I said, it wasn't until I honestly got pregnant with my oldest daughter to where it was like, oh, okay, now I gotta shift my mindset because it's a girl. You know what I'm saying? Saying so, I don't want her to go through. And then another part of it was like I want feeling love from my mama. So it's like, oh, now I got something that I can. I got somebody that that's gonna love me and I can love back unconditionally. Um, no strings attached, no nothing. Like we just we in it for the long haul. So I can honestly say, like, me and my oldest daughters are like BFFs. Like we've been through the trenches or whatever. But if you don't, yeah, if you don't get help for it, I can't. I never went to a therapist though. Like it was just most of refocusing on myself. But then either, even after you do that, you still, the kid's going to find some type of trauma. Like kids nowadays be like, oh, well, you don't notice I'm depressed. What you depressed for? You ain't got no bills to pay. You, ain't got, you don't pay not a bill. Everything you got is given. What you depressed for? But then I had to think about it. You know, they might be. It might be something that's going on in their life that I'm not in tune to that's happening and for some odd strange reasons, they can't express it to me. So, I mean, I don't know. It's it's a touchy, touchy subject. So, just... yeah, I think um, me having certain issues with my daughter out of everything she said to me was like the most. The thing that most stood out to me like heavily was that she said that I didn't express my love to her as much. And I'm like, what she mean? I don't express my love to her. I'm like, I buy her everything she asked me for. That's our fault. I always work. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it took me to get into a, re- a relationship mm-hmm. 
it didn't take me to get into the relationship, but it took for the person I was in a relationship to say the same thing. And it kind of really hit full spin in. Right. Cause you know, everybody always said, Oh, you always work a lot, you're working on this, you're working on that, but you are not. It's one thing to buy something, but to just say I love you is more therapeutic than anything that somebody could wear. And when he when he said that to me, I was like, dang, like, you know, my daughter just said that to me the other day. And I'm just sitting up here like kind of lost. Like, you know, that's what really made. I mean, it's, that's not what really made me because when she said it to me, I felt some type of way. Right. But when he said it, that that like really, really indicated like this is a red flag because my communication is off. I don't ever want nobody, whether it's my kids, my, my significant other, my mom, my nieces and nephews, just because I work a lot or I'm working on stuff and I'm not always there, that don't mean that I don't love you, you know? So that's why I did say say not a lot. And that was the other thing because I was talking to my older sister and we had that same conversation. I I think we all can relate to that because I don't, I can't remember a time when my mama told me it was like just out like, oh, I love you, you know, I love you. I don't, I, I I didn't say I love my kids. Like, I didn't say, like, they knew I loved them, but it wasn't the whole I love you or whatever on a regular. Like, some of my kids be like, oh, you don't hug me. So, it was just something I, I had to change, but I I can't remember a time. Like, now, my mother, now my mama will call me or she'll... <sighs> <laughs> Put it on Facebook for the world to see, you know, yeah. that she loved me. Like hearing things like that, or how proud how proud she is, or like I didn't hear that growing up. So I think me having kids, when I started having kids, I don't think I don't know, I have to ask my kids, but I don't think I said it enough mm-hmm. or as much as they would like. Um but now I said Every time I see him, because ain't no telling, you know, they might go out somewhere and not be able to make it back. And you don't want to be not being able to tell, you know what I mean? Tell them that that you love them or whatever. So now I do it all the time. One of my daughters tell me every time she step out the door to get on the school bus, all right, my love, you love you too. You know? Yeah, and it's crazy because I ne- I never really realized that over the years, every time my daughter talked to me, she told me she loved me. And I say I love her too, but I'm like these kids weird though. She do tell me she loved me a these lot. And weird. all she really be wanting me to do is to say it first sometimes. And I just really had to think about being a parent, period. You know, my daughter did witness a lot of stuff, you know, firsthand, and you know, for her to a lot of those years where I wasn't telling her I loved her first was because I was always moving around. Facts. And yeah, you already know I'm a Mexican fan. I yeah, keep, so I'm like, I keep wait a four, minute. Five, six jobs under so my I'm belt. like, what's Quit. wrong with you? Like, you know, what's like, and it's just it's like, you just not, you know. And then I think that's another thing as us as women when we don't tell our little girls. Like, for one, if they father is not in the picture. And then you have a mother that's not telling you that she love you. So when whatever first man pop up and tell him, oh, well, I love you, she going back to the daddy issues, not telling, you know what I mean? I don't know who my dad is, so I never really felt the real fatherly love. Or, hell, my mama never told me she loved me. So now whatever dude comes around or comes to our life and tell her that he loves her or tell her the things that she wanted to hear from a parent. Now she all for it. So this man, now he can do any and everything he want to her and she think it's love or whatever. Or they go, they can see what you've been through and think that's love. Like, as a, like I ain't going to say I ain't never fought one of my kids' dads, but I tell my daughters quick, don't, it's never right for a man to hit you. And don't, I mean, don't hit him because I will cock back and swing. <laughs> but if you hit, you're going to get hit back. You know what I mean? So you know what it's crazy because I actually feel like you know, and, and I always this is my first episode, so I said I want I'm always from this episode to the end. I'm gonna always keep it all the way real. I really feel like the stuff that I've been through in my past, you know, especially having my daughter and her being the first one, 
I feel like I didn't make so many mistakes that no, she, all, mistakes she always is trying to steer away from that. Like everything about just anything I ever did, because she was like, uh-uh, mama, I'm not doing it because you went through that, and I'm not I don't, right. I'm not going through that. And the first time is always a mis- the first time you're supposed to make mistakes. And the second time you fix the mistakes that you did with the first time. And if you have one after that one, it's it's all it's a progression. Yeah. Like as of now, I think Tato, I done got to the point now to where Tato can Tato can dang near get away with murder <laughs> at this point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's my kid, and I'm gonna have to stick beside her. Like the first one, you strict. Then when I had my son, it was more so like I was strict, but then I was kind of lenient. Then when I had my third daughter, it's like, mm, all right, you get a little more leeway. So now they look at the 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 younger two and they be like, dog, like, where the fan at? Like, why you ain't hitting them with like where's where's the repercussions? Like, nah, I at some point you get tired. And it just be like, I right, I done been through this already. Ain't no, I'm not finna chase around no kid. Yeah, I ain't. I, you ask my grandkids, and I just look at them. Tell that your mama gonna pay for it. That's how I feel about it. Tell that your mama gonna pay for it. I definitely call them like, hey, your kid did whoop, whoop, bam, run me my money. Yeah, yeah, my daughter. I just, if I could do things differently, it'd be the same way. It would. It'd be the same way. Why you said I that? wouldn't change nothing I did having my first daughter. Or even the situations around me becoming a mother, I wouldn't change nothing because it def it it made me the person that I am now. So I wouldn't change nothing. Well, I will say that she do like both my kids is inspire me, but if I don't see, I don't know something about her just make me all uh, probably because she's been around the longest. But at the end she of- just make me just make me feel totally different about the stuff that I need to do for myself. She's supposed to. Like I'm like, man, that's my girl. But if I just be looking back, like, man, I hope I just hope that she just learned from everything I've been through and just. But this is you can't you can't stop them. They gonna the same yeah, way you bump your head stuff. is the same way they bump their head. All we can do now is as far as our kids give them guidance or whatever like one of my i got a daughter now like she i don't know what happened in the communication part but from the age of i think maybe 13 to like 15 i couldn't get a hold of her like i i just couldn't and i made the decision to you know son her with her dad for a little while and then she came back. But when you're so used to having your kids to yourself, it's like, mm. and like I had a feeling of being a bad parent because I sent her to her dad. But it was just too much going on. And I figured they had too much leeway with me because I was always at work. Like It was just too much leeway. So it wasn't until she had a, um, a situation to where she almost got raped to where she really was like, yeah, this ain't for me. And she would like she would literally talk about it. Um, and that's her testimony for it. And I'm just glad she made it out of that situation. But she still has, I think some she I'm I feel like she still got trauma behind it, but she almost like the best mom now. Like that little black baby, she do what she can. I mean, she bumps her head, and I'm just there to to help pick them up. Like you can't shelter your kids. Then when you shelter them, that's just like when the little white people, when they had the little kids on the leash mm-hmm. or whatever, and then you turn around and they, you know, Jimmy John is up here shooting up the school building. Cause you done had them on the leash. You done treated them like a dog all his life. You done leashed them. So. You know what I've been, I'm, I'm guilty to that too. I always had a leash. No, not Girl. a leash, but I, I can't lie. My sister had one. She was like a little <laughs> monkey harness, and, and so the kids could get back. I thought that was real weird, but she definitely in public. One of her, she used to put her kids on a little but harness I, thing. With I the tail. definitely play my kids close to me, like because I just, and that's another thing. I experienced so much trauma that I'm like, how could anybody really? care for my kids you know what i'm saying right. i done been through some stuff i'm like like dang like y'all so said y'all here for me or y'all say y'all my friends or my family so it was you like just... i just i i literally and it took for me to get into a relationship yet it 
with you know with the person i was previously speaking about for him to you know be like no you gotta let the kids you know what i'm saying because i literally <laughs> was like these are Bro, my kids they not i feel you people do them I wrong i'm gonna hurt them like i can't do it <laughs> I feel like i don't think my oldest like my kids i could out of all my kids, my oldest daughter is probably the only one that really know how to catch the bus. Mm -hmm. And that's only because of her auntie on her daddy's side. Like, I'm picking up. I'm dropping off. Like, if I tell my kids right now to catch the bus, they'll look at me like I'm retarded. Like, nah, you better catch the bus. Walk, dude. Back in the day, yeah, bro, I used to walk. Every we man for walk. themselves, God for them all. <laughs> <laughs> we used to truck it. Like, I had this one best friend, and I swear to God, like, she stayed on freaking 17th and Freebirds, my nigga. And we used to walk from 17th and Freebirds all the way to Malcolm X Academy just to go to school. And it was like, we had a school bus, but we decided to walk. Like, we was out here thugging. My kids, they won't, they will not catch a bus. They would rather pay a $40 lift to pay two dollars and fifty cents to get on the bus. Mm -hmm. Now my oldest daughter should catch the bus quick, and like I said, that's only because of her auntie. If it wasn't for her auntie, her auntie don't drive, so they ain't have. If they wanted to go somewhere, they had no choice but to get on the bus. So, but if her auntie was like a driver, I really believe like she wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. I don't even think my son ought to catch the bus. <laughs> like, so I don't like low key. I think my oldest daughter is literally the only one that ought to catch the bus <laughs> without getting lost. I feel like my son would get lost. Anybody else would get lost on the bus. Definitely. So they called me and begged me for a ride. And it's like, and my husband would be like, man, you better let them on the bus, man. They're my kids. I'm, this is my car, and I'm going to go get them. So I think we play. I think they play like hand in hand, so yeah. Whatever. I I just be like, nah, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't trust nothing. So these my kids, they gonna be with yep. me or they gonna be close, very close. I no, nah, because well, I how can I they ever know. learn from it? Either. I know that's what I'm saying. It, I I you know it's it's crazy because I done so much learning still as a parent right. like how you just said everything is a progress like i had to see that some of my own stuff was really affecting my kids because i'm like i'm letting what i think is going on based off what has what has happened to me affect their yeah. growth and development not saying that they're they're short stopping in any way because they're not they're both smart they're both people person you know, people love my kids generally. You know, they they have a lot of my traits socially, but yeah. I've just was like, you can't trust everybody. You can't trust certain people. You got to be careful and cautious and all of this and all Thanks. of that because of stuff that I've been through, you know, so many times. That, but I had to realize that they have to experience the world and see people for themselves and see what type of people that they like and don't like. I just hope that everything that I taught them about opening up to people they're not naive to because you know some people will think, take I advantage think, of i think i told my kids all their life you don't have no friends because you can i can't even really say that well i can't be besides you like i really like i got a couple female that i consider as friends to me but you are literally the only person i let into like what's going on like you in there like i talk to you every day on the phone but I tell my kid, I tell my kids quick. Look, that's my baby calling now. Retard. Mm -hmm. Um, I tell, I tell, I've been telling my kids for the longest of time. Y'all don't have no friends. Like it's seven of y'all. Y'all are each other friends. And as far as the girls, I just want, my, I just want my daughters to be close. Only because, like me and my sisters are not close. So I feel like I want my daughters to be close to their sister. They close to their brother because he's the only boy. So he get. Like he got, he came out on top. <laughs> you ask me, you know what I mean? Like, and then he was always sheltered. And now I just, I let go. Cause like my, my son was definitely a sheltered mama's kid. So I had to let him, as he got older, I just let him go. I just had to, you know, let, let go and let God, as they would say. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> that one time that boy called me and be like, mom, I'm gone. It's over. Don't don't play with my kids. It's it's a rapper tapper. So I don't know. I think we the stuff that most most of us have went through, we definitely will traumatize yeah. our children. Trying we feel like we're saving them from the hurt and heartache 
you know what I mean, or what the cruel world has to offer. And in turn, we hinder on them. Because now it's like we done did so much for them. What if something happened to you tomorrow? Your kids ain't going to know how to survive. Right. Like, I want them to be able to survive. It got to the point to where my son didn't have to wash the clothes. He didn't, you know, all he had to do was take out a garbage. He didn't clean his room because his sister was cleaning his room. You know what I mean? Like everything that he did, his sisters did it for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like, okay, well, something happened to me. What my son gonna do? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, what my girls gonna do? Like, y'all don't know, like, y'all don't have the life skills. So I had to let them get out there and teach it to them. And I'd be quick. Like, bro, no, I'm, you got to fi- figure out a way the same way I figured out a way. Like, if you exhaust all your options mm-hmm. and I see you exhaust, all, exhaust your options. all your options, then I step in. But for me to come in and try to save the day for you, like, I'm all, like, I'm not, you know, most, I don't know what it is with most parents where they kick the kid out at the age of 18. It's time for you to fly. Like, that's your time. Unless your child is still in school, keep them home. 18 is not the appropriate age either. It's I never asked my, my oldest daughter, I never wanted her to leave. I told her she couldn't leave my house until she was married. Like, she's like, Well, I got a boyfriend, I don't care, I don't want you to go. Like, y'all stay, stay with me forever is what I want y'all to do. And they be like, mm. So now everybody got their own little shindig. So now, you know, Yara finna be 17. She already talking. Well, I'm leaving. Who? You leaving who? You ain't going away. You stuck here with me. <laughs> you is stuck. But see, the whole 18 thing is, okay, first of all, 18 is two years they from still 16. Finding themselves. What do you really know in them two years from 16 to 18? Unless you really just had a, a life of hard knocks and have to grow up quick. You don't know anything about finan- uh, financial stability that's when people create the most debt is and right I there think you know you're you're most likely to create debt probably be evicted probably tear up your first car so it was like why Definitely would 18 <laughs> so why would 18 be the <laughs> be the appropriate space for or a time in a child's life where they should move out of the house you know most of the time i, I couldn't wait to move out my mama house though i couldn't I, wait i yeah. was seven I wasn't even 18. I was 17. And I, my very first landlord, I literally lied to her about my age and got my first house. Like, I was ready. I feel like if they're ready to go and it's a big step and they ready, they ready for it, I'm all for it. Like, I'm I'm here. Because they, they not going to be able, they not going to be able to fend for themselves. Like, I give a shout out to my, my friend, Quana, her mother, like from when we first got our job, she made us like we literally had to pick a bill and we paid that bill every month. You feel what I'm saying? It's like See, that would grant so, you to be able to stay on your own, but a lot of kids not even doing that at 18. No, I pay my kids. I mean, I make them now. I do. I make them like, okay, y'all got a whole phone. We're gonna pay a hundred dollars. Y'all pay a hundred dollars on the phone bill. Mm-hmm. Like, all you gotta do is pay a phone bill, and it's literally a hundred dollars. And even if you don't give me a hundred dollars, the phone bill still gonna get paid. So it's like you try. I feel like if my oldest daughter wanted to move out at the age of 18, I'd have been for it because she was very, very mature for her age. Mm -hmm. Now, my other girls, I didn't think they was ready. I I still don't think one of my daughters is ready, but she got her own house Mm -hmm. now. So it's like, okay, let's get it from there. So it's not, it's only up from there now. But if you need me, call me. I do, however, but I don't want them to go. Put that on the out, I do push <laughs> entrepreneurship or a job that. or jobs. That's what I will push because right now, eighteen is the prime. You're not scared of a lot of stuff, right? So it's like if you're gonna jump off the porch and become financially free, that would be the time to do it because and you're your not scared of nothing, is flowing too. right? So. And you creatively, you got every thought in, in your mind. You know, I'm thinking back to when I was 18 and I had all that stuff flowing through my brain. I'm like, man, I could have probably capitalized off that. So I think I will push more of my kids being entrepreneurs or going to college if they want to go 
Or, I try to push college, but college or, for or building a career, you know, because you can still build a career and move up in a company without going to college too. So I think I will push them three things on my kids before I will push them to move out. Right. College ain't college isn't for everybody. And sometimes it takes a while for that's just like you telling the kid, like, okay, you just did 12 years of school. Now you need to go to college and do yeah. four more. No, nah, you can take I, a break and figure out what I you wouldn't need to tell do. them to go to college. Well, when I say college, I really mean picking up a trade. Right. Because, like, what we're doing right now, what people could do, you could get a trade for that take you six months, boom, you're done, you're making good money. Right. Take a trade for a year, boom, you're done, you take, you making good money. You know, I know people who take the welding class or the CDLs or CNA. CDLs is well, popping off now. Whatever. Too. You, could get, you could get you a trade and be a millionaire. You know, if you could just put them a couple months in, you don't know where you might end up. So when I say college, I mean, you know, just a higher education, anything that you can do that's, you know, quick, not not quick, but, you know, just not so time costly. Right. Do that. But I think most, your feet. most kids that go from, unless you're going to school for like a doctor or a lawyer or things like that, then I think straight through. But you got some kids that so right after they graduate high school, they go into college and they right back. Yeah. That's good one. I feel like that time apart after high school is very critical to figure out what you wanna, what you want to do. Yeah. And focus and you know focus on that. It's never I should say it's never too late to it's never too late to start nothing. It's never too a lot late. of people don't even make it through their first semester of college because they get there. It's no parent, you know, parent guidance. Facts. You on the teacher dorm, don't give a care if they right? The teacher to... don't care because it's a hundred of y'all in the big lecture hall. So, you know, <clears throat> um, it's a hundred of y'all in the in the lecture hall. You know, and then they got parties. I remember my sister went to Whitewater and they had a uh, party Whitewater every day. Party. They had a party Whitewater every day. Parties. And do you know she kept at least a 3.5? I'm like, how? I mean, I so went up there to visit. I'm like, girl, we at we drink it every, it just, every it, day. It, it, <laughs> that's just like no. We go well, young when I was the younger version of Tasha, mm -hmm. I would go out and kick it like a mug and we're on, I'm at work the next. I got to be at work at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I just came in from the bar at three. I'm still hung over, but I'm still going to work. As long as you know, it's something that you need to do. You definitely, you definitely going to do it. So, but yeah, I'm definitely get a trade, start you a business, get you a good job and work your way up. Do those things, save you some money, travel. I either, you know what? I will leave your room the same. Go travel. No, no. What? Mm -mm. I ain't leaving nothing the same. You got leave your room the same. Go travel. <laughs> no, ma'am. Your stuff will still be here. <laughs> you better beat it. Go to every. I don't care if you get in a van and go to every fifty states. <laughs> I was thinking about that too, though. I want to buy like a school bus or like um, one of the real big coach bus. RV. Not even really, because you know now they got like the school buses and they gut them out, mm -hmm. and then you put like your little. If I can find, if I can, if I ever made enough money i would definitely do that and i would like i'd be gone like when nobody see me because i'm definitely finna visit every, i'm finna visit all the states i'm somewhere i'm always somewhere it's just ain't at home because i ain't got what i gotta worry about gas well not even gas diesel i got everything i need on my little bus <laughs> <laughs> so it's like i always wanted to do one of those though like be up in whatever but yeah 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 i think kids just need to Take more time to figure out who they are and what they want to be, and not let it be so social media driven. Nah, uh, it's a wrap for that. Everything is social media driven. Everything, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Like, fam, I be on TikTok from. I start at nine o'clock. Look up, it's three o'clock in the morning. I'm on TikTok. So, I mean, everything is everything is internet driven. Right about now, like you could be a get a millionaire just off being off the internet. Yeah, you could so, be a what is it called, an influencer. And I did not know, like my son was so into games, and I did not know you could really make a lot of money just sitting up playing games all freaking day. Like I don't hit play the game. <laughs> Think you go to this Fortnite tournament, you gonna win. <laughs> so 
you know, I did a paper for um, a class one time and it was on social media and I really was researching and it said that social media is conditioned or channeled to lure people attention. How else, supposed to, how else are you going to get somebody attention? But it's like if everybody is looking at the same thing, then everybody going to be the same. So that's why I always... Not true. The way you, you might... I might see you do something one way and then I got another another way of doing it. It's, it's this, it, technically... That's just like you got a lot of females that do eyelashes and eyebrows. Mm-hmm. You got one chick that... Do your Nike sign up? You got one chick. I mean, it's it's different ways. It's the same concept. It's just different ways of doing it. But if, like lately, a lot of a lot of people, for instance, you, been embracing the natural hair. Girl, that's and it's a struggle. But on the flip side, when frontals closures i still wigs. give me a frontal i know i know but when that stuff was introduced it took over like wildfire now girls is not even doing wearing natural hair but lately it have been more people sprouting up but i'm just saying that to say that basically whatever the trend on social media is that's what everybody is jumping to instead of being being authentic but that's how we was and that's that's our whole life existence it's always been influenced that way hip-hop is it that's that's just us yeah, like, but people get high, up, but people are forgetting about themselves and making themselves into pe- other people. How most of the people that are being emulated because of social media are not even like that outside of social media. I get that. I can get that. So if you see a rapper, you know, advertising a shoe, he might don't even like. He might don't even like those shoes, but because it's the endorsement. He getting paid to wear those shoes. You get what I'm saying? So now, do you think somebody honestly is walking around like, "Oh yeah, let I'm Yeezy endorsing me, but I like your shoes." I'm not walking around here with with holes in my shirt, and you charge your four hundred and fifty dollars or however much to wear it. But it, I mean, I don't know. Everything everything is influence. That's just the same as. Even like the Jordans now. Like back then, Jordans used to be like 80 bucks when mm-hmm. they first came out. Now you're paying two, three, four hundred dollars for shoes that they ain't doing nothing but re revamp revamping yeah, from the eighties and nineties. Yeah. It's just a different color pattern. Jordans out in 2022. It's just a different color pattern. And most of us fall victim to it because I try to any time to any time a pair drop. I be trying to figure out ways. I got to get this. Got to figure out how to get this money by tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Try to get through shoes. But at first it was just like, no, nah, I'm not going to stand in no line to get no Jordans. But now it's like almost I'm stalking sneakers, the sneakers app, just to see when, what Jordan is coming out. Or if I, if I like them, I pay for them. If I don't, oh, well. But I don't know. It's just, mm-hmm. I just be yourself. Honestly, I guess I just think a lot of kids get away from being themselves, especially now because I see a lot of young girls just ready to jump off the porch and anything they see on social media because it's gonna make them look a certain type of way, you know. What made you jump off the porch? It wasn't social media because we definitely had what we did, we had MySpace, yeah. We had had my, but MySpace wasn't cracking how Facebook and Instagram and TikTok is crap. I don't know because you know what? A lot Something of Something you seen on TV? You know what? A lot of the stuff I did, I felt like I did because of the people I was around. But ultimately, I feel like some of the stuff that I probably experienced in my life, like in my home setting, is probably what initiated those things. I don't think that, especially people from our generation, I don't feel like we all just jumped off with the intention that the jump off was going to be what it was. <laughs> Now these kids know, like, this going to get me in trouble, and I'm going to do it. If you don't, I mean, you don't get caught, you ain't do nothing. You you ain't get caught yet. <laughs> it's just like me. I tell it ain't illegal unless I get caught doing it. It's not illegal. <laughs> if, if it's a sign right there say no U-turns, I'm going to bust that U-turn, even though I know it's legal. But it's not illegal until the police hit me with the, the red, the blue. Everybody, everybody, 
that's yeah. illegal shit. I mean, yeah, that's true, but but it's not illegal until you catch me. See now and you charge me with now it. Now we digging deep because <laughs> at what point do you say I'm not gonna do these things if I know it's gonna get me in this amount of trouble? When I get caught, because certain for people it. continue to get in trouble as if trouble did not get them like they didn't get in trouble this, before. If okay, if, like, I'm if getting, you keep getting in trouble, you can't act like you're new to getting in trouble when you get in trouble the next time. You just gotta be smarter about what you did. It, you just the be smartest thing for you to do is to not do things nah. to get you in trouble. No, nah, but you ain't living my life though. I'm on the edge. <laughs> I'm like a razor blade. I'm trying to live. No, YOLO. No, 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 Yolo. no, no. Okay, no, that's no. Like, okay. Look. No. <laughs> okay, say for instance, I go Me to a store, <laughs> right, and I steal a candy bar. Mm -hmm. All right. I got away with it the first time. So now when I go back to the store, I want a candy bar and I want a bag of chips. Now, if I get caught this second time with the candy bar and the bag of chips, <laughs> by the time I come third time, I know this that time you tried to do it second time and didn't work. We got to revamp ourselves. It ain't illegal until you get caught and get charged. <laughs> but then you got some of the ones like you you constantly getting caught, but there's no repercussions. So if I'm not getting that's just that's just like a cheater. If you if I'm constantly catching you cheating. And I'm not doing nothing about it. There's no consequences behind you're what you're doing. Me serious. You gonna keep cheating. Mm -hmm. But if if I if you get to cheating and I'm like, all right, nigga, I'm I'm out of here. Bye. See you later. I I la vista. Now in your head is all oh, you know. Effort, man. I don't care. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But you sliding down the wall when your baby, when your you know when the homeboys ain't watching. You sliding down the wall and you up there playing Erica Badu called Tyrone. And everything and it's nah. So now you gotta figure out what you did in that relationship that effed it up and make it better for the second one. Or you you might just turn into a, I see a, some a men that cheater. just never change nothing and stay the same. Like so you gonna continue this behavior. You in a hard relationship and you and I know what's kind of go. But we I think us as females we are the problem when it comes down to that because look john john you know he throwing a couple dollars here or he you went to go see about see a man about a dog and you came out with a stallion you know? so it's like <laughs> it's certain things that make a female be like oh well you know he cheated whatever like nah you gotta go so it's like now first first sign of cheating with me now I'm gone. Like I stayed in a relationship and I knew I was gonna cheat on for like six years. So what about cheating back? Why is it that men, if a woman, if a man a man can cheat on a woman a thousand times, Facts. have kids on it, say, Oh, I just was Facts. using her, mm -hmm. all this and all that to mm -hmm. justify him breaking mm -hmm. your heart. Mm -hmm. But the minute you, you show back? A little light of gonna, interest is somebody he's else. Kill you. He yeah. Or is that just me? No, no it's, it's everybody. Why? Um, I don't understand because that because what's good for you is good for me. I was always taught what's good for the goose is good for the gander, but most men take it as females are not in a man's eyes. The female is not supposed to be carefree. Only person that could be carefree is a male, which I don't condone because nigga, I'm gonna be a free spirit out here. We are gonna have a cheetah thon. You're you're carefully breaking my heart. <laughs> We're gonna have a cheetah thought. I, I mean, I can't well like okay, I stayed in a relationship and I knew I was gonna cheat on and I cheat back. But you didn't catch me, so I was I really cheating. If I didn't get caught, you ain't cheating. If I didn't get caught, you want I wasn't cheating. But I know I'm cheating. I got sneaky link two, three, and four. But if you ain't catch me, I ain't cheating, then I'm gonna fall out. When I find you, find out you cheating, I'm gonna fall out. I'm a whoop de woo. I'm gonna do all that. I ain't lying. I ain't gonna. It's gonna be. It's the toxicity for me. <laughs> <laughs> but me and some most men like. It's like if you have a key to a new house, and then I think men treat us. It's like okay, they their key opens our door, and then no sooner than you give, if another man can open up the same door, now he butt hurt. Why? When nobody saying that when you but was you over there with, key in somebody else's door. Why you in somebody else's master lock? Like why you making master keys and spares? <laughs> like nah, bro. I ain't. I don't. It's. I don't. It's like a catch twenty two. It's. Listen, it's don't crazy. do with me that you don't want done to you. And those are facts. Those are facts.
those are yeah and you know the other crazy part about it too is like a man could be in a relationship and he could have side women but if i come to a man and be like i i'm in a relationship can you be my side man they be ready to blow your whole spot up <laughs> actually now it's actually now you got a lot of men that don't like being that will take a side dude position would they yeah because i i see the where they like you but know? what I, I what i don't what i do find amazing is is most uh what is it polygamy relationships it's always two females to one male why i can't be two two males two to one, one woman? woman like why i can't have two dudes because that's, that's i don't i know <laughs> No, I'm with him Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You got me Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. What's Sunday, up? I get a break. Jesus always had a break on Sunday. <laughs> that is my rest day. You hear me? We are resting. But yeah, it's I think it's just a whole it's a whole culture thing with fem- they don't females are should shouldn't be carefree. And if she is carefree, she considered a hoe. So but I don't think, do I think it's right? Nah, I should be able to have just as many sex partners as you. Then they be like, oh, well, you ran through. How? How? How am I ran through? Because I, you know, had sex with you and then I ain't, you know, I threw you back in the deck, reshuffled and came out with your friend. Ain't my fault. <laughs> like, I reshuffled the deck. If you get a joker, you're going to reshuffle yeah, that definitely- deck. <laughs> How many times do you think you reached out for your day before you found your king? I don't know. I'm reshuffling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reshuff- I, I'm what reshuff- is it? Is it what 52 cars in the deck? We're gonna be finna do the 52 shuffle. <laughs> yep. But see, you know, most people when they play space down play with the jokers, which is perfectly fine. I'm well, on we're gonna exercise. play 52 pickup. I bet you I'm gonna find them that way. <laughs> <laughs> that fish is mine. That's my fish. <laughs> Goes to the pet store. How much is that little dog in the window looking <laughs> like? Well, I don't know. It's crazy. Well, Tasha, I want to say thank you for uh, no, supporting me. You no, know, I got you, Jiggy. I'm always here. And I most definitely am up to a co-host. And I most definitely up to us getting some shirts made if you going to do it. <laughs> I'm with the shirts. I'm with the shirts. I'm with. I'm with it all. I'm with it all. It's, it's as a, like the friends that you do have and that's close i say keep close to them because you don't have you can't find so many real genuine yeah. friends so yeah. love you like a sister tramp you know i love you <laughs> too girl <laughs> well thank you everybody for listening in hope it wasn't too much out the gate <laughs> Oh, okay. You know what? Um, My name is Robin Reese again. I did uh, say that in the beginning of our recording. You can find me on Facebook um, under my name, Robin Reese, R-O-B-I-N-R-E-S-E. You can also find me on Instagram at Rorico, R-O-R-E-C-O, um, dash, rich, R-I-C-H. And you can also find me on Facebook, the regular name, Tasha Williams. Um, again, if you need your CPR done, check out my uh, what is it? What is it? My business page at Williams uh, Health Savers, Williams Heart Savers, um, LLC. Again, good night and be safe, Milwaukee.